Before I forget, in our last session, we saw that the alpha carbon next to a carbonyl is somewhat acidic. Mm -hmm. In our last session, we saw that the alpha carbon next to a carbonyl is somewhat acidic. That would be this one over here. And that, that's still true here. This is somewhat acidic. But we've, already, we've been assuming that it's still not nearly as acidic as this hydrogen over here. So that's why we're not focusing on forming enolates here or deprotonating the alpha carbon. That would be, this would be the most acidic carbon if this was an aldehyde or a ketone. But in a carboxylic acid, this is way more acidic. Because as we discussed, uh, it's better to put a negative charge on an oxygen than a carbon. So we won't be focusing on forming enolates and deprotonating the alpha carbon for carboxylic acids. There's somebody else who's much better to deprotonate. Let's figure out which of these two compounds is more acidic. That's a good start. He just drew out the whole structures. That's a good start to just draw the complete structural formulas. as well, now you've shown what these would look like after they deprotonate. That's the key for figuring out how good an acid something is, asking how happy it would be after it loses the proton. The, um, the first one is going to be more acidic. I think that's right. What would be the reason for that? Because uh, uh, residence has... Um, well, the, uh, you have um, through the inductive effect because you have a, a, one more oxygen than the second molecule and also through resonance where you have more resonance structures that are going to better uh, stabilize and spread the, uh, the negative charge over the entire molecule. Okay. Now, let's see. You said there's an inductive effect. This well, oxygen over here? Pretty, pretty far away. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting point too. That's an interesting point too. Um, now, this oxygen, we would think, would tend to pull the negative charge towards it, spreading it out, and that doesn't occur over here. It's good that you're thinking about how far away it is, uh, but on second thought, it's really not that far away. Um, it's just on the carbon that's adjacent to the carbon with the oxygen. Well, it's not that close, but it, it's about the same distance as some of the uh, inductive effects in some of our previous examples. So I would expect this would be a significant effect. Now, you also, so um, that's a good reason to think that this would be more acidic this has a greater stabilizing inductive effect. Now you also thought there might have been some other resonance structures. And what would have been good there would be actually to try to draw them. Well, let's see. We can draw this resonance structure. It's always good to actually draw the resonance structures. So here's one resonance structure. I'm sorry? Uh, I thought there was a resonance structure on that. Yeah, I think it's going to be hard to get that as it would violate the... Uh, now, if we try to move these electrons down here, there really isn't anything we can do here. There's no way we can... There, there's no way... This is not close enough for resonance, basically. This is not close enough for resonance. There isn't really any way... Um, so if we push these negative charges down here, there's, there's no way to, to use resonance over here. Um, we're stuck. This kit does not have any interesting resonance structures with these two compounds. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that, this one has one resonance structure, correct? That's right. And this one also has one resonance structure. 
Both, um, so resonance doesn't help to explain why this is more acidic because this has the same number of resonance structures as this one over here, at least as far as stabilizing the negative charge is concerned. Correct. Okay. So the resonance explanation, I think, turns out not to pan out. So we're stuck with the inductive effect that you talked about before. Well, one of the morals here is it's always good to actually use electron pushing arrows to actually draw the resonance structures. So we did decide this was more acidic because of the inductive stabilizing effect of the oxygen. So would this have the higher pKa or the smaller pKa? It would have the smaller pKa. Right. A larger Ka, but a smaller pKa. It looks like your instructor is focusing on the pKa's. problem that your instructor covered. We want to write the chemical equation for this reaction. Write the, so basically, I guess we want to show the mechanism and the products. Okay. Show the mechanism and the products for this reaction. You started out by just writing the full structure. That's a good start. What are you doing now? Um, I was going to move that. Draw the other resonance structure. Yeah. Okay, that's fine, although it's not really necessary for this particular problem. So okay. we can stop there. It would definitely be good to remind yourself that there is another resonance structure for this compound, which is the reason that it deprotonated in the first place. Okay. But we don't always have to draw all the resonance structures because they're all equivalent. We only need to draw the resonance structures when that helps us to explain something. So since here all we were trying to do is predict the products, this would be a good answer. But it's good that you saw that there is another resonance structure. It's very good that you saw that since the nitrogen started neutral and it's losing electrons at the initial head, it should end up positive. And you got the right number of protons here. By the way, this is called butanoic acid. That should make sense. Oic acid is the suffix for carboxylic acids, and bute means four carbons. This molecule is called ammonia. It's just the name for NH3, ammonia. Something else that your instructor asked in the lecture notes then was, name this compound. What would be a good name for this compound that we've got here for this salt? Um, uh, ammonium. In IUPAC, no. the suffix is 08. Sometimes in common names, it's just 8. In common names, it tends to just be 8. But in IUPAC, it tends to be 08. That's a, a pesky detail. But that's good. Work that out. Ammonium butanoate. This would be an ammonium butanoate salt. Good. One thing we're seeing here is that amines and ammonia are bases. Amines and ammonia are bases. That will be important as the course goes on, especially when you get to amino acids and peptides. These are not very strong bases, but they're strong enough to deprotonate a carboxylic acid.
Incidentally, this is the type of problem that tend, people tend to miss. Suppose this is, this is a test question and they asked you to predict the products. Most people can't believe that the answer is this simple. Most people believe something more, more interesting must be happening here. Um, but remember that carboxylic acids are acids, so sometimes if you're asked to predict the products, you should just show them deprotonating. Sometimes the answer really is simple. Now this is confusing because something else that theoretically the ammonia could do is act like a nucleophile and attack the carbonyl carbon. You saw that in, in the video series that you can also have a nucleophilic attack on a carboxylic acid or acid derivative. And to some extent, this might happen. These actually compete with each other. Both of these might be competing with each other. Um, so, um, so that's something that's a little pesky. Things that can act like bases often can like, act like nucleophiles as well. So when you're working with carboxylic acids, you have to consider two things. You have to consider that they might just get deprotonated by a base, or that instead of acting like a base, it might act like a nucleophile and attack them. And sometimes you might actually get a mix. 